So first things first, we have to look at how the app is laid out. And so there's a few different sections, three sections really. We've got the previewer here, which takes up the most room on the screen. Uh, that's just a video of what I recorded. I just did a basic screen recording here of me sending out a tweet. And then over here on the right, we've got a bunch of controls. I'm looking at my media library here, but there's other things for adding text, for doing uh, mouse call outs, screen recording, special things, and just modifying the video. We'll get into each of these in subsequent videos. So skip ahead if you want to see one of those. And then down here at the bottom, we have the timeline. And so this is the nonlinear editor uh, that you have access to. And so you can see multiple tracks going on here. Now, this is a recording I did just now. Like I said, nothing super exciting, but you can see the two tracks that I have. This is a video track uh, with the video that you're seeing right here. And there's an audio track as well from the built-in microphone. And so these were automatically named from the app when I did the recording. So this is what they'll show up as. And you can move them around and do whatever you want. Uh, so that's all right there. You've got a scrubber right here that you can move around uh, start to finish. And then, yeah, that's really it. You see how long the project is here. Down here, you can change your cursor. We'll get into what each one of these do. And then you can do some stuff with zooming the timeline and that stuff. And then down here in the bottom right, last things for this section, uh, you can choose whether to have these show up in different ways. And so basically you can show thumbnails that are either the whole track. So you can see kind of as this one goes along, it changes a little bit based on what's happening, or you can do a single one. And so there's just one thumbnail to start. Uh, I like to have the track because then I can see when big things change. And then waveforms, uh, you can do single ones or stereo ones. Uh, I don't have any stereo sound, but uh, you can choose whether those show up in different ways. I can turn off the waveforms if I want, but I find them super useful. So I always like to have those there. You can also turn off thumbnails, but I don't like that at all. So let's keep those on. Then there's snapping. So you'll see if I kind of bring these up on the same track, I get them close together and they snap together. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in video, but you can see uh, kind of as I get closer, it just snaps up to it. If I turn that off, then as I move these around, it never snaps. So it kind of just goes uh, exactly where you leave it. I like having snapping on because then you can move things right up against each other easily and know that they're not clipping together. So that's really nice. Usually keep it on, but you can turn it off. And then finally here, we have the frame rate of the timeline. And so this is set when you did your recording and you can change it here. So you can change the resolution. So this is the resolution I recorded at. I can change that and I can also change the frame rate. So I can change it down to maybe 30 if that's what I prefer. It is gonna warn me that, hey, it may not display all edits because you're going to a lower frame rate. This is why I mentioned earlier that you really wanna make sure you get the frame rate right that you're going to export when you're recording so that your timeline lines up. Um, I'm not gonna do this because it can make it so like slightly weird things happen. It's not gonna break anything, but things may not look exactly pixel perfect how you want it. So I'm gonna leave that the same, but yeah, that is the general editor for ScreenFlow.